In this video, we're going to discuss how to find the missing angles using our trigonometric ratios. Just to remind ourselves, these are the three trig equations that we're going to need to use. So we have sine is the opposite over the hypotenuse, cos is adjacent over hypotenuse, and tan is opposite over adjacent. Remember that within the brackets of sine, cos, and tan, we always place in an angle. It's the angle that we deem to be the one in focus of our right angle triangle. And then we label our triangle with respect to that angle with the opposite, adjacent, and the hypotenuse. Before, in all of our questions, we have had to work out one of the missing sides of the triangle. So we were given the angle in question, one of the angles that was not 90 degrees. We were given another side of the triangle, and we were asked to work out that second missing side. In this example, we can see that we're given both the hypotenuse and the opposite to this unknown angle. It's our job then to work out the value in degrees of the missing angle. Like before, the first step that we're going to take is to label our triangle with respect to the angle theta. We can see that opposite 90 degrees is the hypotenuse, and opposite our angle, of course, is the opposite. The equation that links together these two sides is, of course, sine of theta is equal to the opposite over hypotenuse. So at this stage, as before, we are just going to plug in all of the variables that we know so far. However, we don't have anything on this left-hand side of the equation. It still is just sine of theta. And on the right-hand side, we get 4 over 8. We can simplify this to 1 over 2. So sine theta equals 1 over 2. At this stage, I like to think about equations as where we do the same thing to both sides in order to solve them. For example, if I have an equation that is 2x equals 4, I'm going to divide both sides by 2 in order to solve the equation, get x equals 2. So what I'm doing in this example is I'm doing the inverse operation of timesing by 2. For example, if I had x squared equals 4, I would square root both sides. Okay, to get x is plus or minus 2. Square rooting is the inverse operation of x squared. Just how adding is the opposite of subtracting, multiplication is the opposite of dividing. The inverse of sine is written as sine to this power of minus 1. So sine to the minus 1 of this left-hand side is equal to sine to the minus 1, or inverse sine of a half. It's better to say inverse sine than sine to the power of minus 1, because it's not actually a power, it's just an indication that it's an inverse. However, when we're reading it, as long as we're aware of that fact, it's okay to say both. On the left, the sine function followed by the inverse sine function is just going to return to us our initial input, which in this case is the theta inside this bracket here. Just as if we timesed x by 2 and then divided by 2, we would be returned with just x. On the right, we still have inverse sine of a half. This is something that I can put into my calculator. Above your sine, cos, and tan buttons on your calculator, you should find inverse sine, inverse cos, and inverse tan. Placing that into the calculator should return us with the solution theta equals 30 degrees. Let's have a look at this example together. So just as before, we're going to take this triangle and label the sides. Here we have the angle theta, so opposite that angle is the opposite, and next to that angle or adjacent to it is our adjacent. What we can do now is think back to our three trig equations, find the one that links together the adjacent and the opposite. That is going to be tan of theta is equal to the opposite over the adjacent. Let's plug in what we know so far. So right here we have tan of theta equals 4 over 7. What we can do next, of course, is this inverse tan. We're going to try and remove the tan from the left-hand side by applying inverse tan to both sides. Once we've done that, tan and inverse tan will cancel each other out on the left-hand side leaving us with just the input of tan, which was theta. And on the right, we have this expression, the inverse tan of 4 over 7, that we can just place into our calculator. 
Again, make sure to close the brackets of your function if your calculator requires that. A lot of the calculators will give you a nice open bracket when you type in tan to the minus one, but you need to close that bracket when you've completed the input for that function. So for this question, we work theta out to be 29.7 degrees. Let's look at one more simple example together. Another right angle triangle, another triangle for us to label. Let's find the 90 degree angle and then find the opposite of that, which is going to be the hypotenuse. Then we're going to find the angle in focus, which is theta. The side that is next to that angle in focus is of course going to be the adjacent. The equation that ties together the adjacent and the hypotenuse is going to be cos. Let's plug in the numbers that we know so far. At this stage, remember we have to do the inverse of cos on both sides of the equation. On the left hand side, that will simplify down to just theta. And on the right hand side, I will have the inverse cos of 2.24 over 5.92. We can just place that into our calculator now. And we find that the answer is 67.8 degrees. Let's work through this more complicated example together. Here we have an angle alpha, that is what we need to find. I can see that if I'm able to work out this angle here, then I would be able to subtract away 20 and find the value of alpha. So step number one is to focus on the larger right angle triangle and label the sides accordingly based off this pink angle here, which I'm going to call theta. Opposite theta is 25, so that is the opposite and opposite the right angle is 50, so that is the hypotenuse. The equation that ties together the opposite and the hypotenuse is sine, replacing the variables that we already know, and then applying inverse of sine to both sides, we find that the answer is 30 degrees. So with theta being 30 degrees, I can now subtract away that 20 degrees to work out the value of alpha, which is 10. In this example, we have two unknowns to work out. We have this length x, and we also have the angle theta. Just looking at this right-hand triangle, this right-angle triangle here, we can see we have only one piece of information. We only have the bottom length of that triangle, which is 10. We can't solve anything using just one piece of information. Our equations, sine, cos, and tan, all require at least two pieces of information. So we're going to have to move to the left-hand side and look at this right-angle triangle here. We know that the base length is a straight line, so this is also a right-angle triangle, with this being the right angle. Let's label this triangle with respect to the angle 60. So opposite 60, we're going to have the opposite. Next to 60, we have the adjacent. And of course, directly opposite, the right angle is going to be the hypotenuse. It would be useful for us to learn some information about the right-hand triangle. In this case, working out the opposite would give us a shared side between the two triangles, so that's what I'm going to focus on. I can see that I'm going to need the opposite and the hypotenuse as the two sides in question, so I'm going to write the equation sine theta, because that is the one that links together those two. So I'm going to fill in the information that I know. I know that theta is 60 degrees, I don't know the length of the opposite side, and I know that the hypotenuse is length 7. Here I'm trying to find the unknown variable O, so I'm going to multiply both sides by 7. I can place this into my calculator and solve to find the value of O. This is what that length works out to be, 7 root 3 all over 2. I'm going to keep this as an exact answer, so keeping it in third form for now. If you haven't learnt thirds yet, just convert this into a decimal and keep plenty of significant figures as you continue working through the question. Let's turn our attention to the right-hand triangle. We can see that we need to work out theta, and we have this side on the left and this side on the bottom. Let's label the triangle and figure out what those two sides are. So next to the angle in question, we're going to have the adjacent. Opposite the angle in question, we're going to have the opposite. So we have the opposite side and the adjacent side, which are linked together by tan. Substituting in O and A, I can now apply inverse tan to both sides of this equation, and I find that theta is 31.2 degrees. 
I can now use Pythagoras to work out x. I could use sine, cos, and tan if I wanted to as well. I'm going to stick to Pythagoras. So a squared plus b squared equals our hypotenuse squared. So I'm squaring 10, squaring this 7 root 3 over 2, and setting that equal to our hypotenuse x squared. Now I can square root both sides. And I'm going to round this answer to a decimal, so I find that is 11.7. Thank you for watching this video. I'm glad you've made it all the way to the end. If you have any questions about the video, remember you can leave them down in the comment section below. Please like and subscribe if you enjoyed it, and I will see you in the next video.